Hey everyone! I hope you've all been keeping safe during these crazy times. This week, I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to make latitude lines using Unity Shader Graph. A copy of the project will be available for you to download for free on my GitHub. A link to the repo will be available in my description down below. Before we dive in, please remember to comment, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more of my content. Here I am in a fresh Unity project using Universal Render Pipeline. If you're using HDRP, you'll be able to follow along as well. ShaderGraph is not compatible with the built-in render pipeline. If this applies to you, please follow along using a third-party tool such as Ace Gitmo's ShaderForge. Shout out to Unity for making dark mode free and saving all of our eyes. The first thing we need to do is create a new PBR ShaderGraph. I'll store mine in the Shaders folder, and then go ahead and double click it to open it up. To start, create a position node and set the space parameter to object. We want to be able to define which axes the latitude lines follow on a sphere. So create a new exposed vector three property and call it the up axis. Let's default that to the world up axis, which is zero, one, zero. We want to get the angle between these two vectors. So we need to understand a little bit of math. We know the formula u dot v is equal to the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v times the cosine of the angle between the two. If the magnitude of both u and v is 1, meaning the vector is normalized, and we know that 1 times x is just x, then we can cancel them out. This leaves us with u dot v is equal to the cosine of a. To isolate a, our angle between the two vectors, we must take the inverse of cosine, which is the arc cosine, on both sides of the formula. The arc cosine of cosine cancels out, leaving us with our formula a is equal to the arc cosine of u dot v. Let's execute that formula in shader graph by first normalizing both of our vectors, then taking the dot product of them, and then take the arc cosine of that. The value is in radians, so let's convert it to degrees so it's easier for us to work with. Next, create and expose a vector 1 property for the degrees between the latitude lines. I default mine to 10. A simple modulo division will give us the degrees to the line below, basically highlighting each of the latitude lines. This is good, but it's not quite what we want. If we added thickness to the latitude lines now, they would only get thicker below the latitude line. If we subtract that value from our degrees between the lines, we get the degrees to the latitude line above. Feed those into a minimum node so we can add thickness to both above and below the latitude line. Create another exposed vector 1 for the thickness of the latitude lines in degrees. I default mine to 1 degree. Since we're adding thickness both above and below, multiply it by 0.5. Subtract the output of our minimum node from this value. Since we're subtracting, this value could be negative, but we don't want that. So go ahead and clamp it between 0 and 1. Feed that into a ceiling to make it a whole number. With the latitude lines created, it's time to see the results of our labor. Drag the output of the ceiling node into the alpha channel of the master node. Click the gear on the master node to bring up the options. Change the surface parameter to transparent. Looking good, right? If you want, check the two-sided bool to see the back face. When it comes to alpha, everything black will be completely transparent and everything white will be completely opaque. Any grays are in between the two. Time to add color. Create two exposed color values, one for the base color and the other for the emission color. Be sure to set the mode on the emission color to HDR. Simply multiply the output of the ceiling node with the base color and feed that into the albedo channel. Then multiply the output of that with the emission node and feed it into the emission channel. Now that's looking really good, but it would be cool if it was animated. Create a new exposed vector 1 for the speed. I default mine to 10. Then multiply that with the output of time and add it in right after we convert to degrees. Remember, Unity doesn't have contextual saving, so don't forget to press the Save Asset button. Create a new material that uses the shader, set the values to whatever you'd like, try playing around with the up vector, it's pretty cool. And I added some simple bloom post-process for some extra pizzazz. Finally, you could subtract a custom origo from the object position to make it kind of trippy. And that's it. You can now add latitude lines to pretty much anything in any shape. 
What kind of cool uses can you come up with? Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. Your continued support means so much to me, and it helps me create the time to make these videos. If you'd like to see your name here, as well as on my live stream, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Stop by my live stream on Twitch, Wednesday through Saturday, 1pm to 7pm Pacific. Join my active Discord community and chat with other developers. If you like my work, check out my Unity Asset Store page, where you can find other cool shaders. You can try my games and other asset demos on my itch. If you made it to the end of this video and you haven't liked and subscribed yet, go do that now. Thanks for watching.